taking your partner for granted by having the nice things that they do become like expectations and then you just add, add, add to that without appreciating what is already happening. Because I think that can happen in a marriage. I've been married now for 15 years. Didn't get married till 43. So I spent a long time as a single woman and being real independent. And we can have these expectations and we can have and we can start taking things for granted and we can keep building on that. Or we can expect that our partner just through osmosis is going to know exactly what we want or need. It's like yes. shortly after my husband and I got married, when we first got married, we had two homes, his home and my home. We used to joke and say, when one got dirty, we'll move to the other one. <laughs> Not really what we did, but that was our joke. But at one point, the house we were living in, which happened to be my house at the time, was needing some cleaning. The bathrooms, the kitchens, everything needed a good cleaning. So I get up on one Saturday morning, John, and I'm like a house of fire. I am like cleaning. I'm like a cleaning maniac. And in my mind, I'm thinking, he's going to jump in and help me. I didn't ask him to help me. <laughs> but I thought, he's going to see me going all around the house doing all this cleaning with so much zeal. And he's going to want to jump in and help me. Well, guess what? <laughs> he just stayed out of my way. He's like, man, I don't know what's going on with her. But I'm, I'm, out of, I'm out of the way here. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with her, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting madder and madder and madder in my head, right? I'm like thinking, he sees how hard I'm working. He sees what I'm doing here and he's not helping. Amazing. <laughs> that was one of our Amazing. first meltdowns when I thought, oh, wow, maybe I have to actually communicate a little more. Yes, yes. That's so great. So great. Yeah. So these um, things also bring up a couple of um, of questions. This one kind of goes along with what we've been talking about. I thought this was kind of a sweet question. This woman says, when my partner does something and I show appreciation, he always tears up. Do you know what that is about? Is he just so full of joy? He's hyper masculine, by the way. So it's real cute. That's so beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? That's an acknowledgement of how important she is to him. Uh, I have to say, you know, I'm this very hardworking masculine guy, but also a very soft loving guy you know i've integrated the male and female side and it's through loving a woman that that happens for a man if a man just becomes soft without loving a woman he becomes soft <laughs> he should needs to be hard and she's soft you bring those two things together every man just wants a woman to appreciate him and love him for what he does for her what he provides for her and when you feel deep inside that maybe you're not worthy of it or you're not going to get it or it's not possible and you get it it's so sweet it's so sweet yeah, and I don't know if we as women can really get and understand how much that means to a man when he receives that appreciation and acknowledgement and when he really receives that kind of feedback. Because I think a man's experience, you know, sure, women are out there in the workplace that are, you know, kicking kick and tail and taking names and all of that. But I think a man's experience interacting with other people is not the same like men i think they don't compliment each other as much they don't give each other that much positive feedback right we're competing with each other there's a competition there's a measuring of what you've got what i've got it's always being a measurement to see how powerful you are power is the key thing not a negative power to change other people that's insecure men but you want to measure yourself and you look for how you measure yourself as you look to, okay, I can do this. And what kind of a reaction do I get from that? And so it's confirmation that I'm good enough. It's an amazing thing. Part of all of romantic gestures that I recommend to men for women is do all these little things for her without her having to ask if you, if you can do that. And I teach them what to do. So they know what to do. And if she doesn't ask and what she's getting there is the reassurance again and again, that I deserve to be loved. I don't have to do more to get loved. I don't have to do more to get love. And that's what happens when you have your strong, nurtured female side is you relax and you have a trusting that if you're not getting what you want now, you just shift gears, focus on some other place where you can get what you need. And then as you're feeling happier, you become like a flower and bloom and you magnetically pull out the best at him. But often you have to ask to get it. That's why we talked about in the beginning is that needing to realize you kind of brought it out, which is, you know, you're cleaning the house and he's just sitting there watching men have a gene, the motivation gene. And it says basically never do anything you don't have to do. 
You see, we, we live in a world of have to, that's testosterone. And when women are too far on their male side, their unhappiness comes from, I have to do it. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do that. That's the sure tell sound uh, sign that you've gone too far to your male side, as opposed to I get to do this. I like doing this. I love doing this. I like having someone do for me. I have someone to do for me. I have so much in my life and the gratitude, the happiness, the excitement, the um, being proud of yourself, what a good person you are. All those are the qualities when you're in touch with your soul self but you need support from the outer world. Men need to have their feeling of being uh, acknowledged for their competence, their capability, their support. That's the, the big thing for men. Now, certainly I want all those things women want and women want all those things men want, but how much do we need? See, that's the secret to all this is to recognize that on the male side, it's the testosterone. Whenever you acknowledge what a man does with appreciation, that he made a difference, that he's accepted and he's trusted. Those are the powerful messages that build a man's testosterone back up. And for women, the powerful message is to build her estrogen up is that you see her, you hear her, you consider her, you care about her, you touch her, you, you go into her both emotionally and mentally, then you go into her physically. And there's, that's the complete fulfillment. Mm. Yeah, really beautiful. So this man from this question, this man is tearing up because he's probably getting this from no one else. In yeah. his life, there's yeah. probably no other source for it than this woman in his life. Now, to know that there could be other people giving it to him, but they don't mean that much to him. The fact oh. that that's why I said he loves her so much that she got it uh, from that he's getting it from her. Oh, uh, that's a good nuance. Yeah, that, that's where he really needs it from her. There, there's a place as a man. You're constantly measuring yourself. There's this thing about alpha males, right? There's yeah. every monkey tribe. And we're ruled by a lot of conditioning that comes from our monkey life. And, you know, that's our digestion and all kinds of hormones, as, as well as our sex drive. These are all things that are partially ruled by a primitive part of the brain, which is instincts. And when, when a woman is appreciating a man, particularly if a woman is responding to his romantic gestures, that means he's the alpha. You see, in the monkey kingdom, if you're the alpha, the head of the tribe, uh, the women all want to be with you. So, yeah, <laughs> oh, that's good. right. So, yeah, so there's a conscious funny. message at the woman he cares about. Other people could appreciate him, but in his mind, he could be thinking that person is much better than me at this, and I can't be the number one. I'm not the best. Which I always say to men, I say, if you want to help market your company. <laughs> always say that you're the you're the best at something like you're the best in California as opposed to other states you know find out for, for providing this we are the very best men want to feel the best and so if you can't compete with all the men in the world and nobody can there, there's always this little thing that we we competing and everybody competes but men just do it more now once women are on their male side they also compete a lot right and that causes low self-esteem when it comes to body image how beautiful am I that's your male side telling you you're not so beautiful because uh, you're out of balance. You are beautiful. That's who you are is to love yourself just the way you are now and always to grow. Nothing wrong with wanting to be better, but you don't have to feel I'm not enough to become better because it's the natural flow of life to become better. So the need to criticize people, punish people, push people down. Actually, that's very primitive. If you're a monkey that's re in, in a low consciousness person, that's required. But once you get to the higher consciousness, we actually care about love and romance. It's a different set of rules that apply. Uh, you know, Baslow talked about what level of life you're at is survival level. Then all you need to be happy in a relationship is somebody can feed you or you can build a fire. I remember once I was in an argument with my wife, Bonnie, and going to our ranch. We used to have a lot of fights in the beginning. We overcame all that and improved great sex as a result later on without the fights. But anyway, we're at, we're at our little place at our ranch that I got in, in Northern California, where it's really cold and winter. Not comparable to the East Coast, of course. <laughs> but right. for us, it was cold. But it was an old place. And so it had thin windows. And it was really chilly. So we got there and there was sort of a tension between us. And I built a fire. All the tension went away because we were cold. And that was our primary need. And we got warmth. So when you're getting what you need, your heart can open. But when you're not facing survival and then comes security, then comes, then comes achievement, then comes belonging, uh, then comes intimacy. And that's a higher level of consciousness. So the more you can be independent, achieve, 
that you've got your group your, your who supports you, then the key thing to growth that you feel a need for, just as important as the need for food and survival and security and money is the need for love. And that's where we are now, is that people who are discontent in their relationships is because they haven't identified that need and been able to explore it and get it. Women will feel when they're out of balance that they need to be appreciated. See, that's a, the number one complaint from an unhappy woman is I don't feel appreciated. And keep in mind that men are not good appreciators. That's why we're drawn to women. That's why there's, what is it in football? There's guys out there banging their heads, suffering, getting concussions, getting beat up in order to get the cheerleaders <laughs> right. to raise, raise their legs and wear cute dresses. You know, this right. is, this, women are cheerleaders. They have that inside of them. Not that they can't go out and beat each other up, but generally speaking, most women go, is that really worth it? Right. A little bit of wisdom there, but cheerleaders is that to be appreciated for what you do bumps their testosterone and to be appreciated by your wife makes you the king. See, she has a bigger impact because why do men even seek to compete It's to be the number one for her. And why do women open their heart and give so much is because they want to be treated special. You know, we all a little distinction in the word men want to feel important. Women want to feel special. And mm -hmm. when you're over there looking like, where's the appreciation for me? What I suggest is you're looking in the wrong direction. And where you need to look at is don't look for appreciation, but look for respect. See, respect is different. So when my wife was feeling unappreciated in the early years, she used to always say, and so many of my women clients say, I don't feel appreciated, I don't feel appreciated. And so I said, I gave my own experience, which I appreciated my wife so much. She, at the beginning, she cooked dinner. She never complained. She took care of the house. She was great in bed. I got everything I wanted. Are you kidding? You think I don't appreciate her? She's everything. Why doesn't she feel appreciated? Because feeling appreciated increases testosterone and that's not what she needed. What she needed was estrogen. So I even went so far as to sit on the phone talking to my friend so she could hear and say, oh, Clifford, I'm just so lucky. My wife is the most amazing woman. She does this for me. She does this for me. She does this for me. <laughs> and, and I appreciate so imagine you've got this husband and he says to you, uh, I appreciate you so much, honey. I don't have to do anything. By the way, would you bring me the remote control? <laughs> you're really going to make her angry. Because right. what she really needs is not for him to ask her to do more for him, for her. She needs him to do more for her. That's what women are feeling neglected. And they think if, if I'm appreciated, then I'll somehow feel happier or he'll behave better. No, you ask for what you want and he'll behave better and then reward him with appreciation and he will respect you more and his appreciation for you will grow. But first he has to respect you, do things for you, treat you in a way that makes you feel special, fulfills your needs. That's what respect is. Everybody thinks respect. They don't know the difference. Even in the dictionary, look up respect. It says appreciation. So, but they're two different worlds is when I respect someone, Usually I will respect someone if I appreciate them. So if a woman doesn't feel respected, she thinks she's not being appreciated, but actually he is appreciating her. He's just, she's, he's just not respecting her and he doesn't respect her because he doesn't understand women. You know, if you say, look, honey, I just need to talk about this. Don't say anything and I'll feel better. And if he does it, he's respecting your request. He's respecting your need. So when I drive, when I'm driving on the highway and if I respect the speed limit, what do I do? I slow down. See, right. I like to drive fast. I go hundred miles an hour. I drive to other places with no speed limit. So I can go 150. That's who I am. But when I'm driving here, I respect the speed limit. So I slow down for that. So that's called respect. It's altering you what you want for somebody else. And that's what romance is. See, romance is a man not doing what he wants to do but finding out what she wants to do and delivering it. That's romance. And women have to get that. Giving to him is not romantic. He'll like it. Sure, give me more. And right. he'll like that, but he doesn't like you more. He bonds when he succeeds in doing things that are of value to you. And that's called respect.